Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with another Beasts of the Mesozoic figure, and yes, this is the final of the Tyrannosaur series, at least so far. Who knows if they'll release more stuff later on, because David does have a habit of surprising us with some really cool stuff, you know, like the fact that we have a Utah Raptor and stuff coming out. I didn't see that one coming, and then again, the Raptor series is very old. It's the very first Beasts of the Mesozoic line we had, so maybe in the future we'll get more Tyrannosaur series releases. Fingers crossed, because I would love to see some more stuff pop up, and there are certainly more species they could create. But you can see this time we have the Daspletosaurus, and again, we have the same type of look for the front of the box, same type of basically the setup as we have the species name on the left, the Beasts of the Mesozoic logo up on the top, the Tyrannosaur series logo, and the fact that it is 118th scale at the bottom, and gorgeous artwork as always to the right. And then if we turn the figure around here, the box around, you've got a nice shot of the figure here on the back, as well as the checklist for Wave 3, and then information on the species and figure. I always love these boxes. The boxes are just so well done overall they are definitely some of the best boxes in the business if you ask me so let's go ahead and pop this open and check out our final member of the tyrannosaur series so first of all we have the assembly instructions i've said it a million times very important to read this you definitely don't want to damage your figure and that will tell you exactly what to do and how not to damage your figure and we also have the card and the card is so nice this actually might be one of my favorite cards overall from the line again i just really like the artwork that we have here for this one not to mention just the appearance of that despletosaurus is gorgeous and then of course here on the back you can see an image of the figure there a little dino toy photography the species name the beasts of the mesozoic logo information about the dinosaur and again who created the art and the creative beast studios logo so a very nice card again just like i said the last few times with a beautiful finish on it again these cards are awesome they deserve their own book to display in i'd love to see like a creative beast studio uh like a little binder that you could put all of the cards into that would be very nice to create on the part of david if he you know happens to watch this video something to keep in mind then we've also got the other extras and stuff that you get which basically would be the alternate feet you can see that you have quite a few uh, feet you can choose from to give yourself basically whatever pose you want for the legs and feet of your dinosaur and then we also have the alternate legs which you can see these legs sport more articulation we have gone over how these legs work and everything numerous times in previous reviews so i don't feel like we really need to take too much of a look at them if we look at the regular legs of course just know that there is extra articulation in the alternate legs of course for these figures but we also have the base and i didn't take the base out this time because the base looks like it's pretty much exactly the same base we had for the gorgosaurus almost all the way down to the tones of color and everything maybe it's slightly different in coloration but definitely the same sculpt and everything so since we just reviewed the gorgosaurus i don't feel like we really need to go over the base even though uh, I often take them out and display them on the base, but recently I've actually been taking them off of the bases and displaying them just standing on their own, so I may actually just keep the base in the box for now. But then we, of course, have the star of the show, our Daspletosaurus itself. Let's go ahead and reposition the legs and get the Daspletosaurus standing. And Actually, now I need to readjust the camera because it's up a little bit taller than I was expecting it to be. But there you go. You can see that the figure does look very, very nice. Again, as I expected it to be, specifically the head sculpt, which, of course, some of the you know figures reuse the same bodies and stuff. I don't know all of them exactly which ones reuse the same bodies, but uh, I can say the head sculpts are clearly different on all of them, and specifically this one's head sculpt is really quite nice. I had to dim the light there just for a moment to kind of show it off. The light was a little too bright when I brought it in, but you can really see how nice that head sculpt looks. But again, it is a gorgeous figure, as they always are, so let's jump straight to a closer look, and we'll check it out from there. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Daspletosaurus, you can see it has a very nice look, almost a bit of a majestic look. He looks very proud. And you can also see, of course, we've got all sorts of really nice looking skin texture and scale detail, scale variation. You can see all sorts of really nice larger scaling running along the jawline here. Much finer scaling as you move up into the palette as well as down here into the lower jaw. But when you get nice and close, you can really see how good that scale detail looks. 
and also a bit more variation to the scale detail as you move back you can see even larger scales right here but it looks really really well done and there's a good bit of variation of color to the face you can see there's like a dark tone like a black moving through there's also like a maroon we also have some yellowish tones we have some off-white tones I can see brownish variations here in the face lots and lots of color which is very common for these figures and you can also see some grays up here running open over the top of the snout with a nice dark wash applied even more variation of color right there so it looks great if you ask me and again very nice and natural definitely the type of colors i could see on a dinosaur like this the eyes as well are painted really nicely you can see right there a nice greenish tone with a black pupil sporting a beautiful gloss coat again the nostrils sculpted out and highlighted with a darker tone in there we do as always have an articulated jaw you can see just like you would expect the teeth are perfectly sculpted perfectly painted all sculpted individually man do they ever look good i'm always so impressed with the inside of the mouth of a beasts of the mesozoic release it's always so mind-blowing and if you look at the inside again the detail is excellent the paintwork is incredible you can see we have some nice pinkish tones in there as well as some reddish washes that have been applied maybe even a little bit of purplish tones in there to give it variation of color you can see the throat back there itself and of course we have a tongue the tongue is a different tone of color than you see for the inside of the mouth as we have a dark dark reddish tone even maybe a little variation of color to that as well and we do have an articulated tongue so you can kind of move that wherever you want and then of course a nice gloss coat everywhere on the inside of the mouth to give it that very nice saliva like look and as you can see that jaw works very nicely as you move back here into the eye socket also you can see the darker tone shows up and really nicely highlights the eye socket right there as you move up here you can see some brownish tones up on the top of the head kind of like striping back as you have this dark black here running down the center but these lighter brownish tones moving along each of the sides of that black running down the center and I think that looks really good but it also very quickly transitions to a different tone of color as you move back kind of like a uh, almost like a reddish brown or a mixture of both i'm not too sure but then we have this very cool kind of a reddish brown or like a maroonish brown running along the side of the dinosaur over here as well you can see the ears right there you can also see that we have the yellowish tone following along down here as well as some blues and browns picking up here in the throat and neck area really cool coloration on this one and i think as a whole the paint apps of this one are very nice and natural they're not overly flashy but they do have elements of flashiness to it especially up here in the face which again i think is a really nice touch for the figure as always you have all sorts of skin wrinkles and skin folds and of course beautiful scale detail as you move through and again we also have the nice washes specifically a dark wash you can see highlighting all of the skin texture here on the lower part of the dinosaur as we move down you can see that we have the black up here but i can kind of see like some brown that's been inserted into the black as well like some dark variations of brown you can see the spinal column following along the back and of course the very impressive scale detail down here moving along the side of the dinosaur there's also this little area of like a light gray that randomly shows up i always love the very minor additions of coloration to these figures it just shows you Again, that they love to give you a very cool paint scheme and paint job for your figure as you move down into the arms you can see we have some nice brownish tones here and uh it's pretty much the entire arm is that same brownish tone kind of like a lighter tone and then the brown it's almost been applied with like a watered down wash like fashion to highlight the detail i really quite like that the nails are painted with a nice glossy black as well and then moving up here into the stomach again you see tons of skin wrinkles and skin folds as well as again some more of that same brown that we have in the arm kind of running along the lower part of the stomach right there we have the lighter tone for the underside with the dark wash again at play and then as you move up here into the thigh you can see the black runs down here from the upper side also stripes down right here and then we have the reddish tones that like reddish brown but there's also other browns that have been applied you can see almost like a brownish wash it looks like maybe has been applied to those areas again just giving you tons and tons of color as you move down you've got all kinds of skin wrinkles and creases and stuff running through the thigh 
thigh down into the calf big bulging calf muscle right there really nice paintwork continuing to run down through the course of the shin and then as you move down into the foot you can see some browns really nicely overtaking a large portion of the feet right there which is pretty cool and again the dark wash as well as the black running down those scoots the brown kind of follows along the scoots running down the tops of the toes and then we again have the mixture of the brown and also that reddish tone for the sides of the toes and of course we have the nicely painted nails with a glossy black and it looks super bird like like you can't look at that foot and not see bird like features in it it is really nice looking and then of course the dew claw and you can see the brown even more on the back of the leg right there and then as we move back up here again we pretty much have that same sort of patterning moving out where we have the black up above and then that reddish tone and then the lighter tone of the underside here and that follows through pretty much the entire rest of the tail as you lead out and then of course you can see from up above you have that nice dark appearance for the dinosaur. I think it looks really good. But then from underside here, we have a nice lighter appearance for our dinosaur, our Despletosaurus. So very nice looking as far as the sculpt and paintwork. I expect no less when it comes to a Beasts of the Mesozoic figure. Again, they're pretty much a masterpiece every single time, but it is very nice. And then as far as the articulation goes, again, you've got a spot here and a spot here. And that allows you to articulate the neck really quite nicely again you can get some nice turns and everything for the neck of the despletosaurus you can also go up a little bit and down but not a whole lot there's definitely some mobility there but not that much i think if our despletosaurus wanted to take a drink he's going to have to heavily rely on his legs moving which of course is how they would do it but again the articulation is pretty smooth in the neck definitely a lot smoother than it used to be and you can swivel and everything again to get nice head tilts so it works really quite nicely as you move down you also have articulation in the shoulder the elbow and the wrist so again you can move it forward and back also you know bend the elbow bend the wrist and then swivel a lot of these joints well that's not going to swivel because i'd have to hold that and then again you can swivel the shoulder as well and also move it out away from the body and then, of course, the midsection articulation, which you never get a whole lot of articulation in. And this one right now is pretty stiff. Again, you often get stiff joints, especially when you first take them out of the box. But then you also, of course, have the leg articulation in the hip, the knee, which is just aching to move for me. It was going that whole time. And then you can also swivel. And if you get the more articulated legs out, you do have, uh, I think, two more articulated joints as you move down into the ankle area. And then, of course, you have one, two, three joints as you move out through the length of the tail. And those are basically just like your standard joints and stuff that you usually have, which allows the tail to move around, even swivel a little bit. And then as you lead out here, you have the wire tail, just like you usually do. Again, they usually all have that sort of wire tail gimmick going on out there. So definitely a gorgeous figure as always another surefire hit i think from the beasts of the mesozoic as far as a size goes for a length from the snout to the tail let's actually go ahead and get a little bit of a better spot right there you are looking at about 20 and a quarter inches or around 51 centimeters maybe heading toward 51 and a half which means that this one is going to be pretty much the exact same size as the Gorgosaurus was, as well as the Albertosaurus. And then for a height, again, depending on the position you put it in, because you could make it go a lot taller, where it's currently standing just shy of about seven and a quarter inches, or shy of about 18 and a half centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T Rex, the Attack Pack Colovosaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect A human being next to our Despletosaurus. And you can see, just like with the others, it has a very nice, very impressive size to it. But for one more comparison, there is our Gorgosaurus next to our Despletosaurus. And this definitely shows you that they are, yet again, pretty much the same size. They look like they are exactly the same size for the most part. Maybe a little more bulkiness to the head of the Despletosaurus. But when it comes to length and height, they are pretty much equal in every way, which means that a lot of the Tyrannosaurus series releases in this final wave, when it comes to these big Tyrannosaurus, were all pretty much in the same size. So I don't feel like we need to continue to give us a whole bunch of comparisons because we very clearly know the size of the figure and we've already seen numerous comparisons in different reviews. If you want to see more comparisons as far as this size range goes, check out my Albertosaurus review. 
review and my Tarbosaurus review as well. That should give you a better idea as far as numerous comparisons with this size range. But yet again, a very, very similar size to all of these larger Tyrannosaurus from this wave. So this brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic Daspletosaurus, the super articulated 118th scale Tyrannosaur series release is yet again very nicely done. Sculpt-wise, we've got ourselves a gorgeous sculpt with all sorts of very impressive fine detail. Again, you'll never find a lazy sculpt from the Beasts of the Mesozoic. They strive to give you the best every single time. David is probably one of the best guys out there when it comes to this community and probably one of the best creators of this type of stuff overall. So you know he's going to give it his all every single time, no matter who he's working with to help fine-tune the figures or paint them up or whatever it is he is going to give you the best of the best and you have that again with the despletosaurus here the sculpt looks great the paint job as well is very nicely done sometimes you get some fairly flashy color schemes with these beasts of the mesozoic figures i feel like the wave 3 tyrannosaurus have all had some of the best paint apps that we've seen through the course of the entire line some of the most naturalistic paint schemes as well we again have that here for the despletosaurus you have very nice naturalistic coloration through the course of the entire body and it's all nice and naturally applied it does look like body color not paint on a figure and again you have those really nice very subtle additions like the blue and stuff in the neck and throat i really love that and of course you've got articulation all over the place which allows you some very nice posability you have a base you have alternate legs alternate feet tons of stuff that you can do and tons of stuff to mess around with when it comes to a beasts of the mesozoic release so if you are interested in picking this up for yourself make sure you check the link that i will include in the description where you can purchase this right now on the creative beast studio website and get this absolutely awesome figure into your hands so make sure you do that and also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching